my god what's going on here i asked for the acid free coffee okay you know what i'm saying and do you see them crazy pants that kid's wearing where the hell oh never mind anyway ghoulies uh well we're about to hear the first words from my creature my uh my ultimate scientific experiment and we're wondering what is it that she has to say what the hell is wrong with you huh how dare you bring me to life in such a pigsty? Well, uh, Edgar was supposed to clean up before we started the uh, experiment. Don't blame him. Don't blame Edgar. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to be supportive here. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, my I God. never let a man put me down. <laughs> oh, my God. What have I created? What could have went wrong? Did you push the wrong knob? 
I'll never let a bed bug in the experimenting room again. You brought me to life with a bed bug in here? Well, What's you know, <laughs> it's you know, it's hard to get. He's, at least he's from Racine. Uh, uh, Freddy, Freddy, help me out here. What's going on? Hey, hey, hey Fred, there? just, uh, well, thank you. Uh, oh, it's ooh. good seeing you again. There. I know, I know. Uh, 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 yeah, she's new here. I'm yeah, so. I just came in. Uh huh. Uh, remember to speak loudly. All right, All what's right. going on at the drive in, Fred? Because uh, I, re I don't know what's going on here. Well, uh, well, before I start that, I just uh, bumped into Lenny Palmer, Palmer up here. He's got uh, some guys from the NRA coming down to see you. I don't know why. Just. I oh, well, that, oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, this weekend, we do have uh, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, Strange Tights starting tonight. And uh, as starting this week, we're going to be going every single night of the week there. Uh, Monday through Monday through Monday through every day. And I'll be there every single day, as always. Uh-huh. And um, that's about it. Uh, let's just hope for good weather. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Kenosha, that's not going to happen. Well, yeah, you're, you're a better wish. You make you better appease the fair gods. Yeah, well, uh, we did wow. uh, do a sacrifice last night. I'm having trouble here with this one. I don't know. Uh, I thought I made the perfect co-hostess for Crimson Theater, someone that would agree with everything I say. And, uh, well, what did what I get? What are you trying to say? Uh, I'm trying to say that uh, you were brought to life for a purpose. And what purpose is that? Uh, to add uh, vitality and life and vigor to oh. Crimson Theater. Oh, I'll bring some vitality to life. That sounds like it. I'm on, uh, it sounds like I'm in trouble already here. Maybe Come on, help me out here, Freddy. Uh, uh, you know what, Edgar, this is you probably your fault. I won't, I won't, I won't help him. Uh, you know, I get the same thing at home. Unlike my, my, my previous experiments, I've decided to give this one a brain, and I see that was a mistake. Oh? Oh, it was a mistake giving me a brain? Uh, well, no, what I didn't you say you were. I'm, I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Oh, I'm, I'm calling my mother. I'm calling my mother. Your mother? Oh, I'm calling her. Uh, your mother might have been the bed bug. <laughs> we did use a little of his DNA, you know, in your creation of you. It gives you that crawly feeling all inside, doesn't it? <laughs> but, you know, the other thing, you know, the other reason we brought you to life was we needed a maid. You know that. You think I'm going to clean up this mess? Well, you made this mess. You're going to clean it up. I, well, see, they got, there's a few things left over. The bed bug doesn't know where the bathroom is, so could you start there? Oh, I am not litter training this bed bug. This is uh, your bed bug. You're going to take no, care of it. No, this isn't my bed bug. He came from Racine. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Ooh, no? No. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm not. Where, where are we going with this show? You better get a shovel. Huh? You better get a shovel. I know. I'm going to have to unbury myself here. I really did it this time, didn't I? I think so. Uh, there's only one thing to do now. You know what that is. Get right back into Dracula versus Frankenstein on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater where that hippie's got some fancy pants.
completing the monster's first life cycle. Soon he will be born again. We must work quickly. Beaumont, tonight you shall meet an old friend. Feeling better? Somebody thought you were a cop, slipped you a drug. You were in another world. 
Who are you? Where am I? My name is Mike Howard. This is my pad. Who are you? I'm Judith. No last name? Did you want one? No, not necessarily. Let me see if I can guess. Oh, I see the same turn in the nose, the full upper lip. You know Joni. I knew Joni. I don't know where she is now. You know, no one here will talk about anyone. It's a kind of self-preservation. Between urban renewal and the county welfare department, we get bombarded with questions and relays. Your ears get curled on the inside. What do you mean you knew Joni? What I mean is, in this part of town, everyone knows everyone in one way or another. How did I get here? Come on, I won't hurt you. They brought you here. Uh, that's Samantha. She goes with that goofy-looking kid over there. He's strange. Well, that's his name, also classification. You sound rather cynical. Not a bit. It's just an observation. That's my bag. I make observations for later replay. Like the football game on TV. Hey, Mike! We found the guy chopped up down at Rocky Point. He was all in bloody and bits and pieces. What are you talking about? We never found his girlfriend, though. The guy can't make out in peace anymore. Man, it's a real bummer. It's not usually this gory on the premises. Maybe we better go inside. No, wait. Just a little bit more fresh air. OK, come on. Like I told you, she didn't say much. We saw her on the beach about six months ago. Mm, that's just about the time she left home. Now, this section of the beach draws a lot of weary, conscious people. They can take those deep breaths they've been dreaming about. Joni was up by the amusement park. That was a big attraction. A big attraction? She used to have fantasies about, about being a freak. A freak? Oh, I can't believe that. Two heads? An eye missing, an elongated spine, anything that was grotesque had turned her on. Uh, like, that's not the whole story. The idea was to turn into something beautiful by using some magical formula. That's why she used to hang around that creature emporium. What in the world is a creature emporium? A leftover from the sidewalk carnival days, run by a Dr. Dore. At least that's the name he, that's the name he uses. You mean this place is a house of freaks? Oh, everything's phony. It's strictly for the tourists. On the other hand, I suppose it, it all depends on what you're really looking for. Joni was looking for her own special fantasy. This just doesn't sound like Joni. We greet the world of Dr. Dure. Nothing but a cheap sideshow. I told you, it's strictly for the tourists. Mike, I don't want to go in there. There's nothing more I can find out about Joni in a place like that. Rule number one about observation collecting. Never take a situation at face value. What you see is not what really is. Better get out his pipe and slippers, Sam. He's showing his age again. You two better be careful. The doctor may be casting today. Don't you let him touch me, Mike. What about me? You know how to go and visit. Only from the waist down. Wonder where that little scary guy is that takes the tickets. Maybe he's out to lunch. Yeah, I can just imagine what he's eating. Welcome to the Creature Emporium. My name is Dr. Dure, and I am the creator of all you are about to witness. It's like listening to dial a prayer on the telephone. Please follow my voice to the first platform. Mike, we didn't come here to hear a recording of some doctor's voice. I've never been in this place before. Maybe, he's, maybe there isn't any doctor to write. Mike, take my word for it. He's around. The guillotine was invented by a French physician educated at a Jesuit college. As a deputy to the National Assembly, 
he proposed that decapitation be adopted as the method of capital punishment in order to make executions as swift and painless as possible. Of course, there is no way we are able to determine if the method is entirely painless, but we certainly know by observation that the entire procedure is swift. If this had been an actual demonstration, you would have noted the extreme lack of blood. Sounds like he enjoys every word of it. Look, Mike, there are wires all over the place. This whole exhibit must be mechanical. Maybe you were right about Dr. Dre. And what is right about Dr. Dre? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know there was anyone about. I am everywhere, particularly in this room, since all of these creatures are byproducts of my mind. I'm afraid we came here for another reason, Doctor. My sister visited your exhibit. Many young people come here to study the mysteries of the occult. And now she's missing. Missing? Yes, she was last seen on the beach, right by your very exhibit. Oh, I see. I have a picture of Joni. face is not familiar to me. I know she's been here in the past, Doctor. Many people come here to study the exquisite work of Dr. Dure. Afterwards, their faces all blend in my mind. However, you may leave your address at the box office, and I will contact you immediately if she reappears. He was right about being all over the place. Did you see his eyes when I showed him the picture of Joni? Yeah, I saw his eyes. He knows Joni. I just know it. What he knows and what he'll talk about are two different things. According to latest research, the male gorilla may attain a height of six feet. Hey, do we have to listen to Dr. Doolittle again? I think we've had it. It is interesting to note canine teeth of the female are not developed into tusk. Yeah, that's real interesting. Especially if you're going with a female type gorilla. Hey, Samantha. Oh, the tire. You're on that kid? Oh, but it's got meaning. Everything's got meaning. You're dreaming again, strange. Hey, Samantha, fetch. Baby, where you been keeping yourself? Why don't you cut out, Rico? I pulled myself out of the sewer. I don't think she likes us. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry. Hey, let me tell you something, baby. Nobody leaves us, do you understand? I think you've been around these squares long enough. I need myself a new chick today, so hop on the back and we'll cut out of here. You all right, Sam? <laughs> hey. Look at a hero. Ain't he cute? Leave him alone! Hey, it's a nice looking piece you got there. Okay, baby, you want it this way. But next time, well, you'll see. Come on, you guys, let's make it. you moved into our neighborhood. Sergeant Martin, did you see those motorcyclists? Yeah, that's, uh, that's just part of the environment. Well, they almost attacked Samantha. Samantha? She knows how to take care of herself. I can't believe the police would say a thing like that. The police aren't saying it, Miss Fontaine. I'm saying it. This is my area. I know it. People like to play games. And pretty soon, you know what they are. You learn when to leave something alone or break it up. What do you know about Dr. Duray? Well, now, you, uh... Trying to play detective again? No, I'm just trying to find my sister. I told you to leave that to me, Miss Fontaine. Hey, Lieutenant. Now, that'll be something important. If you've got a fireplace, burn some wood in it. 
It'll be a lot better than running around loose on the streets. Miss Fontaine, stay away from the beaches. The maniac running loose. It's hard to believe there's so much trouble in the world when you're sitting here listening to the sound of the ocean and being here with someone so nice. Well, it's about time you admitted it. I just haven't wanted to get involved. So many things I have to do. You're right. We don't want to get involved, do we? Just be good friends, right? Oh, well, the time Yes, you're seeing it coming into being now, Groton. The final stages of the adrenal molecular structure. The traumatic shock which has vibrated through these bodies has now been tempered. Tempered to an even rhythm. The blood has reversed through the pulmonary artery. We are all going through changes of having the same blood. It is following throughout all our bodies. We shall soon become more and more as one. Soon, perhaps, we will even look as one. Your cure is here, I promised. I promised you that. But I must have the full force of the serum first. I can no longer remain in this wheelchair. I'm chained to it. I need to feel the earth beneath my feet. Without that Groton, none of you will experience a normal life. What is it, Groton? I'm not giving you your shots for transformation for the past 24 hours. You should not be experiencing any forms of metamorphosis. <laughs> I will not have that, Groton. No, I cannot have you work with me like this. Your only question, this form is for blood. You're forcing me. Forcing me to give you a portion of the serum, Groton. You forced me because of your weakness. 
Because of your weakness, we will lose a measure of the serum. I will not help you again, Groton, not again. Mike, I've been thinking about what you said before. About what? Oh, about Joni being old enough to live by herself. Are you giving up? No, I'm not giving up. Just giving Joni something she's always needed, a freedom from a big sister who thinks she knows what's right and what's wrong. I'm sure Joni will thank you for that. But maybe there's something else you don't know about. Something else? I've been thinking about everything that's happened. I may have come up with a new idea. You know, everything that's happened in the last week is centered around the amusement park. And, and the, only, the only amusement that extends out onto the beach is Dr. DeRay's creature emporium. You mean the place where Joni got her parchment? Yeah, and who knows what else? Well, then Dory is the answer. Well, not the complete answer. There's a couple of things I want to check on that may give us enough information to force DeRay to, to tell us about Joni. Yeah. 